Cuckoo clocks are the most common novelty clocks in the world. They originate from the Black Forest in Germany and have been produced in mass quantities for over 100 years. Some are simple, others are more complex, but they all have the same common components at their core. In this video, we'll see how it functions, and then we'll see how it comes apart, and finally how it gets put back together. So stick around. There's four main components inside a cuckoo clock. The clock movement, the two bellows, the gong, which is mounted to the back cover, and finally, the bird. In this clip, we see how the levers and wires interact to produce the telltale cuckoo sound, as well as the animation of the bird popping out through the little door in the front and bobbing up and down. Note the sequence of events as the cuckoo strike occurs. First, the bird pops out of the door. This action is done using the clock movement itself. There is a wire that runs from the bird to the door, causing it to open. Next, the hammer drops to strike the gong. Then you have the lower lever lifting and dropping the wire attached to the bellow on the right, producing the first tone of the cuckoo. Finally, you have the upper lever that is attached to the bellow on the left side which produces the second and lower tone of the cuckoo, as well as creating the bird bobbing effect using a small wire attached to the top of the bellow. When it is counted out the correct number of hours, the striking action of the movement ceases and the door closes, ending the entire strike sequence. This particular cuckoo clock belongs to a family member of mine, and I have been tasked with cleaning and oiling the movement. In order to do that, I must first take it out of the case. There is a specific process to accomplish this, which is one of the primary focuses of this video. Also, be sure to remove the weights in the pendulum before taking the clock off the wall and attempting any service. The first step is to assess the mechanics of this particular cuckoo clock, which we've already covered. This clock is about as simple as you can get, as there's no other functions like music boxes or visible moving parts, aside from the typical bird and door movement. The next step is to remove the hands from the front of the clock. This is accomplished by loosening the nut holding the minute hand in place, removing the washer, uh, oops, <laughs> don't lose that then taking the hand off and the friction washer behind it. After that, remove the hour hand, which is just friction fit onto the shaft so it can be carefully twisted and pulled off. Since we're on the front of the clock, we also have to disconnect the bird from the door. We do this by holding the door open. Whoops, come back here you little bugger. There we go. So anyway, then you bend the long loop of the wire open and carefully pull it through the little loop attached to the door. Then carefully guide the wire back through the opening, close the door, and secure it with the little wire above it to keep it from flopping around and potentially getting damaged. From this point on, the rest of the disassembly is done mainly from the back and sides of the clock. Now that we're working inside the clock, special care must be taken to ensure that parts don't get damaged. However, if the worst should happen, replacements are readily available. Luckily, this one is in pretty good condition inside, so no new parts should be needed. Also, a pair of small needle nose pliers along with a good set of tweezers are your best friends here. We'll start by removing the pendulum leader. It is not completely necessary to remove this, but it could be another possible headache when taking the movement out later, so it's best to remove it. We do this by carefully opening up the hook on the top, then sliding it up through the crutch wire sticking out of the back of the movement. Next, we'll tackle the bellows. We don't need to remove the wires attached to the levers on the back of the movement, as they are removed and installed along with the bellows. We'll start by removing the bellow on the left. In this case, it doesn't matter which one we take out first, but in more complex cuckoo clocks, it is sometimes necessary to assess the best order to remove them. Taking a look at the side of the case, we see there are usually two things holding each of the bellows in place, a small nail and a slotted screw. 
The screw should be removed first, as the nail is essentially just a placeholder to help keep the bellow lined up correctly against the inside of the case. Now we can start to carefully remove the bellow from the nail. Try to keep it from suddenly popping off and ramming into other parts within the clock. Sometimes it is necessary to use a small slotted screwdriver to help carefully pry it off the nail. This next part is a little tricky. Once the bellow is free of the nail, it must be turned so the bent end of the lift wire can slide through the eye hook at the end of the lift lever on the back of the movement. Special care must be taken during this operation. The top of the bellow has a thin paper or cloth material that is essential for the bellow to make it sound. It is very easy to rip this material, causing you to have to replace either the material itself, which is rather labor intensive, or the entire top of the bellow. Go slow and be patient. Once the wire is disconnected from the lever, the bellow is now free to come out of the case and be set out of the way. It's important to note how the lift wire attaches to the eye hook on top of the bellow. It hooks on in a very specific way that keeps from coming unhooked when operating, but also so it can be easily removed without bending the wire itself. Use the same operation as before to remove the other bellow. Interesting side note, the construction of one of these bellows is essentially identical to many of the pipes within a pipe organ. Next, we have to take off the hooks and loops from the chains so we can remove the chain from the movement. This is easily done by opening up the last link in the chain and removing both the chain and the hook or the loop. Then we can just pull the chain through the movement until it drops out. Now it's time to remove the clock movement. Take out the four screws holding it in from each corner and carefully remove it from the case, taking care to not catch the bird on the upper part of the case. This movement is only moderately dirty. All the oil has dried up, but it has very little wear in the pivots, which is good news. This only needs a good cleaning and oiling, which I will do off camera, and then we can put it back into the case. Then it should be good for a few more years of use. Since everything is out, we should take the time to dust the inside of the case using a can of compressed air. Now that the movement is on the bench, we can take the bird off its perch. I have already taken the liberty to mark the location of the bird so it can easily be lined up when we put it back on. We can also see the mechanism that makes the bird open and close its mouth. I think he's telling the neighbors to stop shooting off fireworks, especially since it's not 4th of July yet. Oh well. Here's the movement before cleaning, and here's the movement after cleaning. Wow, quite a difference, huh? Shined up like a brand new penny. It also has been oiled properly and is now ready to be put back into the clock. The reassembly process is essentially done in reverse order of the disassembly. However, it is much easier to install the chains with the movement out of the case, so we'll do that first. Flip the movement upside down and check to see which direction the sprockets spin, so you know which side to feed the chain through. Let gravity be your friend here. Allow the chain to set into the sprocket and then wind it partly through with your finger or a pair of tweezers. You'll have to slowly rotate the movement back upright as you feed it through and out the other side. Once enough is fed through to grab with your fingers, pull the chain as you would to wind it, leaving enough hanging down so that you can feed it through the holes in the bottom of the case when it's time to put the movement back in. Once that is done, use the same process for feeding in the other chain. Try to keep the chain fairly even if possible as it will help make it easier to feed through the holes in the case. 
Now we're ready to start putting it all back inside the case. Whoops, scratch that. There's one more thing to do before we do that, and that is to put the bird back on the perch wire. Using the marks made on the wire, line it back up, making sure the mounting bracket on the bird is flat with the top of the movement. Then secure it into place by snugging the screw on the back. Before we mount the movement into place, we need to feed the chains through the small holes at the bottom of the case. I prefer to lay the case down at a bit of an angle and stick the hand shaft through the mounting hole near the top of the case to keep it from moving. With the aid of some tweezers, feed each length of chain through the holes. Try to be careful and not tug on the chains too much using this method, as the movement could potentially fall and become damaged. As with everything we've done thus far, go slow and be patient. Now we can fit the movement into the case. Try to keep the chains straight so they don't come off the sprockets, or you'll have to start over again. Once you get the movement into place, it's time to put the mounting screws in. I use a special screw holding driver that makes this step a breeze. This screwdriver is just meant to get the screws started. Once they're all in place, then they can be tightened down with a regular screwdriver. With the movement installed securely, we can reattach the pendulum leader. Thread it through the crutch opening, rehook it onto the suspension wire, then close the hook with a pair of pliers. Before moving on with the rest of the install, we should give the movement a quick test on the test stand. Temporarily attach one of the hooks to the time train, add the weight, put on the pendulum, and give it a swing to see how it does. So far so good, but my bench isn't perfectly level and causing it to be a little out of beat. So, I'll compensate using a toothpick. Haha, <laughs> alright, that sounds a lot better. Seems to be running pretty strong. I'd say we're good to go here. So now that we know the movement works well, we can continue with the reassembly. It's time to connect the bird to the door. First we have to get the wire oriented correctly so it's on the front side of the loop. After that we can flip the clock around to the front, reach through the opening with a pair of tweezers to grab the wire and pull it through. Once you get it pulled through, sometimes you can let it catch on the edge of the opening to get the door in place. Then we can reattach the wire to the door and close the hook. Now we can install the bellows. We start by hooking the lift wire in place in the correct orientation. Then we carefully reattach the wire to the lift lever on the back of the movement. Now we can line up the nail with the nail hole on the side of the bellow and carefully push it onto the nail. This helps keep the bellow in place so we can put the screws in. We repeat this same process with the other bellow. The important thing here is to make sure the wires can move freely, so try not to get the wires tangled up or rubbing into each other. Now we can install the screws that hold the bellows in place. A quick side note, this screwdriver is an amazingly useful tool. I'll provide links in the description below to this screwdriver, as well as other useful tools that are used in this video. This nail is slightly raised, so I'm just going to push it in flush with the side of the case using the flat side of the screwdriver. 
There, that's much better. Okay, now that we have everything back into the case, let's give it a thorough test to see if it functions correctly. This is the manual trip arm for the strike. Just push it down, hold it for a second, and then release it. Okay, so far so good. Now let's see if it stops. Yes! Good. Sounds great. I usually repeat this step several times just to make extra sure, but I won't show that here. The next step is to permanently attach the chain hooks. Put the link back onto the end, attach the hook, and close the link. Repeat this step for all four ends. Now it's time to put the hands back on. The important thing is to make sure the hands line up properly. We'll start by putting on the hour hand. Again, it simply friction fits onto the shaft. Put it on where it's got enough friction to hold in place without flopping around on the shaft. Next, we'll put the friction washer back on to help us turn the hand shaft. Then we'll manually adjust the minute shaft till it strikes. Then we'll know what time the clock is set at. Okay, so it struck once, so that means it's in the half hour position or potentially the one o'clock position. So let's keep going until we find out. Okay, it went once again, let's uh, keep going. Hmm. Aha, okay, so it struck twice that time. So that means we're at the two o'clock position. I'll just adjust that hand to match. Next comes the minute hand. We want to try and line it up with the top of the hour since we now know it's at the two o'clock position. Position it as such, then put on the small washer. After that, put on the hand nut and just lightly snug it up and then we'll test its position. When doing so, gently hold the hand to try and keep it in the correct orientation. Okay, it's a little off. So we'll back off the nut, reposition the hand, and retest. That's quite a bit better. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but this is definitely close enough to call it good. Okay, now we're into the home stretch. It's time to put the back cover on. It fits into a slot at the bottom, then push the top in and secure it with the little tab on top. Finally, we need to test to see that the hammer is striking the gong correctly. We can poke a pair of tweezers through the little hole in the back, then lift and drop the hammer. If there's no sound or the hammer bounces off the gong a few times, kind of like a buzzing sound, you can bend the hammer wire slightly up or down to adjust how it sounds. So far so good, but just to make sure, we'll cycle the striking using the hands on the front and see how it sounds. Excellent! No adjustment is needed here, as it sounds perfect. Now for some fine adjustments to the bird bobbing effect, as the bird is barely bobbing at all. So we'll need to take the back cover off again and adjust the wire under the bird's tail, which is the one that is on top of the bellow on the left. Bend it up slightly so it's a little closer to the bird, then retest. Well, that's much better. It has much more of an animated effect, which is what you want from a cuckoo clock. And with that, there's only one more thing to do, and that is to hang the clock up on the wall and test it over the next week or so. Part of the test involves regulating the clock, which means to test its timekeeping ability. This is done by adjusting the pendulum bob, or in this case a leaf, up or down on the stick. Adjusting the bob higher speeds up the clock, and lowering it slows it down. Try to only make small adjustments at a time and test over a 24 hour period. Once the clock is mounted on the wall, we need to listen to the beat of the clock, which means to listen to the ticking sound. We want a nice even tick tock to the sound. So far, it sounds just a bit off. Let's try adjusting the angle of the case slightly to even it out.
There we go. That sounds much better. Now let's cycle the cuckoo strike and make extra sure it's functioning and sounding correctly. Nice. One more test for good measure. Awesome, it works great. Eh, okay, maybe a couple more tests. <laughs> so there you have it. It looks great, it functions perfectly. And after getting it regulated, it'll be ready to go back to my aunt. I can't wait to see the look on her face. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this video has been helpful if you've thought about digging your hands into one of these. Also, the steps in this video can be used for cleaning and oiling an existing movement, as I did here, or even installing a new one. There's a few minor adjustments needed when putting in a new movement, but that's a topic for another video. Until then, if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to comment below. You can also check out some of my other videos on my channel, and if you aren't already, please be sure to subscribe for more informational clock videos. Take care everyone, and have a good day.